Well, the Russian President Vladimir Putin is in the midst of a domestic crisis, perhaps the most dangerous one of all. Worst nightmare has come true after Russia's infamous Wagner PMC group abandoned their post in Ukraine. Yevgeny Prigozhin had threatened to march on Moscow to force out Russia's defense minister. A move that provoked fury from President Vladimir Putin who promised to punish those who had betrayed Russia. Barely 36 hours into this confrontation, though Prigozhin agreed to a deal that would see him move to Belarus. The Kremlin said he would not be prosecuted as a result and neither would his loyal troops. Let's take a look at how things unfolded in Russia. On 23rd of June, Prigozhin releases a video stepping up his feud with Russia's military top brass and for the first time rejects Putin's core justification for invading Ukraine. In a series of subsequent recordings, Prigozhin said that the evil of Russia's military leadership must be stopped and his Wagner mercenary force will lead a march for justice against the Russian military. We are in the stab at 7.30 утра. Russia's FSB security service responds by opening a criminal case against Prigozhin, announcing the 62-year-old called for armed mutiny against the state. On 24th of June, Prigozhin says that his men cross the border from Ukraine into Russia and are ready to go all the way against the Russian military. Wagner fighters enter the southern Russian city of Rostov. Prigozhin's fighters captured the army headquarters in Rostov without firing a single shot and claims to have the support of locals. Страшно было, но вроде неожиданно все закончилось и поэтому все рады то, что ничего плохого не произошло. В итоге до боевых действий не дошло дело и Пригожин со своими бойцами просто уехали по лагерям. Russian Defense Ministry issues a statement appealing to Wagner fighters to abandon Prigozhin, saying they have been deceived and dragged into a criminal adventure. Putin makes a televised address promising to crush what he calls an armed mutiny. He accuses Prigozhin of treason and a stab in the back. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called the armed uprising led by Wagner a clear sign of the weakness of Putin and his invasion of Ukraine. Belarusian President then announced a deal with Prigozhin following which Prigozhin and his forces emptied Russia's military headquarters in Rostov. Thus, the uprising ended with a Belarus brokered deal after several minor clashes on the highway. In my view, I don't think that uh, Putin's reputation will suffer greatly because Putin enjoys support inside the country. And yesterday it has become clear when um, uh, some of the armed forces refused to join the Wagner group, so Wagner's so-called rebellion. And I think uh, in terms of resolving the situation, it didn't come to a big bloodshed. So Putin knew exactly which bu buttons to push and uh, he managed to sort the situation behind the scenes and uh, let everything blow over. So I don't think that his rule will be undermined through this one incident. Prekosin and all of his fighters vacate Russia's military headquarters in Rostov. Russian government spokesman Mitri Peskov says a mutiny attempt by Wagner will not affect the military offensive in Ukraine. Prekosin will now go and live in Belarus and no charges will be brought against him. Wagner fighters who did not participate in the march on Moscow will be offered military contracts. Media reports emerging suggest that the Western countries either had a direct role in the mutiny against Putin or knew about the whole Wagner plot in advance. The Wagner group officially called PMC Wagner was first identified in 2014 when it was backing pro-Russian separatist forces in eastern Ukraine. At that time, it was a secretive organization operating mostly in Africa and the Middle East and is thought to have had only about 5,000 fighters, mostly veterans of Russia's elite regiments and special forces.